Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I'm going to break down context engineering in a simple way and show you how to get started with it. So recently, Shopify CEO Toby Lutke posted a statement on X that caught the attention of many AI builders. He said, I really like the term context engineering over prompt engineering. It describes the core skill better, the art of providing all the context for the task to be plausibly solvable by the LLM. Andre Karpati, who coined the term vibe coding before, chimed in to agree, adding that context engineering isn't just about crafting better prompts, but about carefully filling the LM's context window with just the right information. He emphasized that this process is both science and art, involving not only instructions and examples, but also tools, history, and even multimodal data. Done right, it boosts performance. Done poorly, it can be costly and ineffective. Karpati also noted that this is just one part of a much larger software layer required to make agentic AI tools more capable. By the way, these tools are no longer just AI model wrappers, they actually have to do many things, such as breaking up problems, providing relevant context, and so much more to address AI model limitations. Now, if you've been using AI to build apps for a while, you will notice that one of the biggest challenges is to provide the required context. AI tools often don't have enough context, or worse, they completely misunderstand it. And it's not just about writing better prompts, the real issue is how information is structured and delivered to the AI. According to this post by Langchain, running complex tasks, especially those involving multiple steps or tool use, can cause a number of problems simply because the AI is overwhelmed or misled by the context. Here, they described four main issues. Context poisoning, when a hallucination makes it into the context. Context distraction, when the context overwhelms the training. Context confusion, when superfluous context influences the response. And context clash, when parts of the context disagree with the rest. When you have any of these issues, you can expect the AI to fail the task that was assigned to it. This is where context engineering comes in. It's an umbrella term for all the techniques designed to solve the context problem. There are already many tools created to solve the context problem, such as the memory bank technique, or a memory layer tool for context such as Byte Rover, and context optimization in Kilo Code, all of which I've covered in this channel. At its core, context engineering is about structuring the right information and delivering it to the AI step by step, so it can actually succeed at what you're asking it to do. Generally, there are four main strategies used in context engineering. There is writing context, storing useful information outside of the current context window for later use, and then selecting context, choosing what to pull in based on what's relevant for the current step. Then we have compressing context, trimming down the info to keep only the most essential parts, and finally, isolating context, breaking tasks into parts so the AI focuses on one thing at a time. Now, all of that sounds great in theory, but how do these techniques actually work in real AI tools? Well, it really depends on what kind of coding agent or system you're using. Currently, context engineering mostly revolves around setting up comments, rules, and system prompts added in markdown format. For example, there is this context engineering template exclusively created for Cloud Code by Cole Medin. The setup here includes adding new commands to Cloud Code, global rule through cloud.md file, and feature requests using initial.md file. First, you can describe the project guidelines and rules in the cloud.md file. You can use the one provided in the repo or customize it as you need. Second, you need to describe what you want to build in the initial.md file. Add your features, list any examples, add your documentations, and any other considerations you want the AI to be aware of. After that, run the generate PRP command to generate a PRP or product requirements prompt based on the initial.md file. Once the PRP document is created, you can run the execute PRP command to start building the project. As the AI model executes the PRP, it will create a detailed task list, implement each task, run tests, fix any issue found, and ensure all tasks are completed. As you can see, this workflow sounds promising. So next, I will show you how to run this context engineering template in Cloud Code. 
Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year as it will mean a lot to me making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Alright, so here I have the context engineering repo already cloned and open in my VS Code. The most important thing in this repo is the .cloud folder which contains the custom commands for context engineering. There is the execute PRP and generate PRP commands. Generate PRP is used to generate the PRP document and this file contains the instructions that will be executed by cloud when we run the command. There is code base analysis, external research, and then ask for user clarification when needed. The PRP itself will contain critical context about the project such as code examples, design patterns, error handling strategy, and a tasks list. And then the execute PRP command will perform six steps for each task. It will start with loading the PRP document and then think of how to do the task, execute on the plan, validate the solution, complete the task, and then reference the PRP document when needed. You can read all of this in the repo. And now the most important part of this is the initial.md file which will serve as the feature request for the agent. In this file, you need to write down the features you want to have. For example, here I described that I want a CLI tool for scraping GitHub repository data using Beautiful Soup, and then store the results as a markdown file. Then there is the example section, which instruct the agent to look at the examples folder for patterns and examples. I'm going to skip that part for now, but since cloud code will look around the project anyway, I just wrote don't copy any of the examples you find here, only use those as inspiration. Next, documentation is where you put all links relevant to the project. For example, I have beautiful soup documentation here, and for those of you who aren't familiar, this is a Python library for parsing HTML, it's generally used for scraping web content. And finally, put all other considerations you need the AI to know about, such as creating a .env.example file if needed, and include project structure in the readme file. Now that we have explored some parts of the repo, we're going to run the engineering request using cloud code next. Let's just open the terminal first, and then type cloud to run cloud code. Now here, type slash and we can see the two extra commands added in this repo, generate and execute PRP. The first thing we're going to do is to generate the PRP, so generate PRP followed by the initial.md file. Press enter and let cloud code to handle this request. And now cloud code is working on the request, it's analyzing the code base and then reading the PRP templates for reference. It will also perform web search to look for ways to collect data from GitHub if there's any. After that, it will generate a comprehensive PRP for building and testing the feature we asked. And here's the PRP generated by Cloud Code. We can take a look and review this first. So there's the purpose of the product, the core principles, goals, and then the why, the what, and then the success criteria, and then context external references, implementation blueprint, list of step-by-step -step tasks, validation, and so on. You can also see the example PRP file in the repo if you want to study it. But for now, I will approve this file to let cloud code write it in the project. And with that, the PRP document is created and the next step is to run it with the execute PRP command. And here, cloud code also already completed the command, so just type slash again, and this time select execute PRP, followed by the path to the PRP document that was just generated. Press enter here, and now cloud code will work on the product request. It will create a to-do list based on the PRP file, and then perform the tasks step by step. As you can see here, there are around 10 tasks, um, and they seems to be unordered. I'm not sure why, but I hope they do it in order. And there are also two validation tasks, so I think this will take a while. So I will pause the video and skip to when the process is finished. Okay, here the process is already finished. And if we scroll up in this terminal, we can see all the outputs generated by cloud code. 
There is the tasks list checked one by one, the test result, and when there are errors, CloudCode automatically tried to fix that error. Next, if we open the GitHub Scraper folder here, we can see all the files generated according to the PRP here. There is the tool source code and then the storage folder for the scrape results. Uh, here we can see an example. So this is the requests library. We can see its various data and the readme content and then tests and then a Python virtual environment and a readme file that describes the project in detail, listing the features, a step by step setup guide, such as creating a virtual environment and installing dependencies and then the configurations, basic usage, uh, here is the command to run the scraping tool, and then the rest of the details concerning this project. Now we will try to run this tool next, so let's stop cloud code with the exit command here, uh, and there is also some detail that we receive from cloud code here. The total cost to run the two commands in this video is $3.05, and they run for about 30 minutes in total, Mm, I think that's quite reasonable considering that Cloud Code did wrote the code for the tool and all of the tasks. It also ran those tasks to validate the results. Now I'm going to test the Web Scrapper tool, so I'll just follow the instructions in the README file. First, I will activate the Python virtual environment with the source command. I will skip installing the dependencies because they are already installed when Cloud Code tests the project. Next. I will copy the .env sample file to a .env file. And then I will run Python in the command line just like in the example here. Uh, let me just copy this. So let's run this tool. And now we get the message that the repository is scraped successfully. And the repo data is as follows. It's also saved as a markdown file in storage. So we can open it here in the project. And there's the VS Code repo detail. So there's the description, statistics, readme content, and that's all for now. And yeah, so the CLI tool is working as expected. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. So that's pretty much it for context engineering. It's all about giving AI agents the right information and tools so that they can generate better output. When done right, it reduces hallucinations, keeps the AI grounded, and helps you get more reliable results. It brings higher productivity and more confidence when you're using AI as an assistant. In this video, we looked at how context engineering works in an AI CLI tool like Cloud Code. But what about AI IDEs like Cursor or Kilo Code? Well, if you want me to make tutorials on those, just let me know in the comments and I will explore them in a future video. And finally, if you want to explore context engineering further, you can check out the resources I used, which are linked in the description below. And now we have come to the end of this tutorial. So, what do you think about context engineering? I would say it's an interesting technique to improve AI agent performance, and I would like to try it out in my next project. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.